We invest in gold. We invest in silver. We invest in the precious metal mining stocks. Why? Because we want security. We believe that long term investing in the, these areas will provide for us a level of security and potentially some growth to our wealth. But we hear all these stories everywhere that retirement plans, that uh, social security, that all of these other things that we have grown accustomed to relying upon, that they could all fail. Is that true? Could social security become essentially worthless? Could pension plans fail? We're going to look at that in this video. And can gold and silver protect us under that type of scenario? Also, very important, what can we control outside of investing in gold and silver? Are there some other actions we can take to take charge of our own financial future? I'm going to give you a few thoughts on that as well. We got a lot to talk about. Let's get started right now. I'm sure you've heard the recent statistics. Nearly half of the people in the United States have no plan, no money set aside for retirement. That alone is scary. But then when you consider also that so far, just in 2022, we have seen trillions of dollars in retirement funds be eviscerated with drawdowns in the bond market, in the stock market, things start to look a little scary. It seems like a lot of people are relying upon Social Security as their primary form of income when they reach retirement age. And that also is very, very scary. If you invest in gold and silver, you know the story behind the U.S. government, the deficits that we run, also the huge amount of debt currently owed by the U.S. government, when you run the numbers with Social Security, their ability to pay out any real form of income to many of the recipients when you look out 10 or 20 years becomes very, very questionable. Now, I'm sure the senators and uh, representatives, they'll make sure they take care of themselves and that their retirement and pension plans are funded fully. But when it comes to the majority of the U.S. people, it becomes a little precarious if we are relying solely upon Social Security to provide for us in our golden years. And what if you're a person who's relying on a private pension plan. Can those also be called into question? Absolutely. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but pension plans rely upon lofty expectations of future growth in the stock and bond markets to fund their future payments to the people that belong to the pension plan. There have been many circumstances where pension plans have gone bust. And if the market doesn't live up to what these lofty expectations need to fund the plans, there could be major problems with some or many of the major pension plans in this country. Hey, don't worry. If you run out of money in retirement, you can always join me here in Ron's basement. I even have a big brown teddy bear waiting for you. I honor the fact that you've decided to spend some of your time with me right now in the basement. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Turn on the bell notifications. Leave a comment in the comment section below. That way we get to know you. No one can say with any level of certainty what is going to happen, but we do know one thing. We have been spoiled in this country, really in the world for the last several decades, spoiled by lofty, lofty market returns in the stock markets, in the bond markets. It's become almost normal to expect returns of at least 10% per year. And on a historical basis, that is just not sustainable. There have been long periods of decades where the stock markets have, have gone sideways. There's even some experts that are calling for market drawdowns further than what we've already have of 20 
30 and even 50 percent. So to rely upon lofty, lofty market returns, whether to fund a pension or to expect what a 401k balance will grow to can be a little or very uncertain. And I just want to point out that the fact that our United States Federal Reserve is taking such extreme measures right now really puts up a red flag for me that there may be some serious serious systemic type problems in the economy that a lot of us aren't even aware of. And it's an unfortunate truth that even if pensions do survive, Social Security does survive, many of the gains will be wiped out by inflation. In real terms, the buying power of any money that we may receive will be drastically reduced. So what can we do to take charge on our own. Many of us have decided to put money into precious metals or the mining stocks because they have a strong, strong thousands of years history of maintaining their value over time. But what else can you do? What else can you do to control your ability to provide for yourself and your family? I think one of the biggest, most overlooked things that you can do because it's a lack of financial education that most people don't understand this, is you can control your cost, right? You have your own personal revenue, but you also have your own personal cost and outflow. And there are a plethora of opportunities for most people where they can reduce their cost without reducing the quality of their life. The first thing a lot of people can do is get themselves out of debt. That can be a lot of work, I understand. But if you are in debt, consider working to dig yourself out of that hole, to no longer be a debtor to anyone. And we are all surrounded by opportunities to save money. Put yourself in a technology time warp. If you have a brand new cell phone every year that's costing you $1,000, consider doing something that someone I know does. Buy phones that are a year or two years old. You can get those for $200. Look at some of the discount cell phone plans, the MVMOs, I think they're called. I use one of those and pay a fraction per month of what we would be paying to go with a major carrier like AT&T or Verizon. There really are great savings opportunities out there that add up to thousands of dollars per year. Heck, over the weekend on Sunday, I barbecued a bunch of chicken breast and made about 12 hamburgers. And when I was bringing all that meat into the house, I looked at it and I thought, man, at a restaurant? This would have cost me like $150. And since I bought the meat at the grocery store, the total cost was about $15. And every time you save some money, think about it like you are paying yourself that money. Paying yourself that money really on a tax-free basis as well. When I do a minor repair on the car, the old Acura TSX out in the driveway, Black Hawk 1, had a couple door lock actuators go bad. I bought new actuators on Amazon for $12, watched a YouTube video, invested two or three hours of my time in replacing these little door lock actuator motors, right? And everything worked great. I then called the Acura dealer because I was curious what they would have charged. $400 to replace them at the dealership. I made like practically almost $400 by doing that myself. And you can do the same thing. Save money, provide for yourself, learn how to take care of as much of your needs on your own as possible. When it comes to entertainment, look for fun, free things to do. Play tennis, go for a hike, Go to a concert at your local city or municipality. Many of them have free concerts all year long. There's plenty of opportunities to have fun for free. And after you do it, after you start to change your lifestyle a little bit, you realize like, hey, I'm just as happy having just as much fun as I was when I was spending an extra 
hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars per week. So if our pensions and social security aren't going to take care of us, we can take care of ourselves. And that feels better anyway. The other thing we can do is we can own some precious metals, gold, silver, precious metal mining stocks. History has shown us that the metals, real assets have maintained their value over time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed my video. I appreciate you joining me here in Ron's basement. You know you, yes, you are important and you're always welcome here. Until next time, be well.